right good morning everyone uh let's just uh pray before we begin our class so maybe one of us can please pray Jeffina, oh, okay go ahead success father we thank you this morning we give you all the glory we thank you for the gift we thank you for the life we thank you for our meeting this morning Thank you because you are the Almighty. Thank you for the knowledge imparted in your Son to share with us this moment. May that glorify in the name of Jesus. And I decree, I declare this morning, it shall be a wonderful moment with you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, success. All right. So uh, last week, we on Monday, we spoke about strategic partnership, right, and how it is important to, uh, whether ministry, whether in the workplace, when we partner with each other there are certain rules there are certain guidelines uh, that you and i must keep in mind and uh, uh, even as we plan to get into these partnerships we must be wise uh, ask direction ask leading from the holy spirit and uh, make sure those partnerships are in line with your vision and the values of your organization right so today we'll get into chapter 13 a very very important uh, chapter and uh, the chapter 13 is on leadership right now each one of us are our leaders right so let's look at uh, uh, some important aspects on leadership uh, which we can apply both in the workplace and in uh, ministry so leadership among many things uh, I, I believe is influence right uh, leadership is in a, a place of influence right uh, sometimes you know leaders are delegated leaders are uh, you know you know in leadership is either delegated it's inherited or leadership is earned right over time so uh, why is leadership so important right uh, there's a wonderful book uh, on spiritual leadership i would encourage you to go ahead and read that as well uh, uh, and, and it's a it's a wonderful book where it gives us greater insights on leadership. But uh, let's look at a few uh, points on this chapter and how you and I uh, can be good, effective leaders. Right, and these are certain principles that we can apply uh, uh, in whatever we are doing. Right. So first one, if you don't see it, you cannot lead people into it. Uh, Matthew fifteen fourteen, let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Now, this is in response to the uh, disciples who are talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were, uh, you know, saying, how can you go and do all these things? How can you work miracles? How can you, you know, uh, bring so many, you know, you know raise up this crowds and uh, what you're doing is not right? How can you call yourself a Messiah? And Jesus responds to that and says, leave them alone. It is like the blind leading the blind. Leadership, as we mentioned, is influence, right? You and I, as leaders, can influence people. But if we don't see the vision in our mind's eye, we will not be able to take our people to that place, right? And we always say this, uh, something that I always keep telling myself is uh, the imagination, uh, the, 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 the greatest nation is our imagination right well meaning we can think we can look at the future right uh, leadership requires the ability to look into the future requires the ability to envision outcomes in the future right uh, because many times in a team or uh, you know uh, maybe in a church or whether even in the workplace you have people just coming they work and they go. There's no sense of direction. There's no passion. There's no zeal. There's no sense of, uh, of vision for the, for what they are doing or for the organization. This is where a leader has to take his place. So as a leader, you and I must drive the vision that we have. Now, it could be, for example, there's a church. Right? This is just an example. There's a church, right? And you see, okay, there's, you know, maybe uh, 50 people at the church, right? Get 20 volunteers and 20 or 20 odd volunteers, right? 
volunteers and leaders, 20. Now, if you don't have a vision for the next, at least for the next two years, uh, or a five-year vision broken down each year, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep doing the same thing, and we will not be effective in what we are doing. Right? Why? Because you and I as leaders need to envision what do you want to see in the future, and whether you're there or no, that is secondary. Uh, but in the future, I want to see this in my mind's eye, and so what do we do? We work towards it. Right, uh, and and we and we work towards reaching that goal. And here is where leaders are important, right? And uh, you know, I remember when I was in Bible college. Oh, uh, uh, you know, I would stand in front of the mirror and teach for every day in the morning one sermon, in the evening, or, you know, after we come back from our college, uh, the evening one sermon. So I'd sit. Prepare the sermon, and you know during those. Of course, there were these phones and videos, but I didn't care about recording it. It didn't bother me. What what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn it. I wanted to really prepare, and I always envisioned myself. Okay, one day I'm going to be preaching, and I'm going to be preaching in front of hundreds of people. So I better, you know, prepare myself now. So in leadership, very important. You have to envision, right? Have to envision what you want to see, right? Um, so it could be in the church, it could be in your organization. If it's a you're the corporate or the workplace, and you're looking at your organization or you're part of an organization, you're working there. Envision yourself what you want to be in that organization. Right? Just uh, the problem is, uh, uh, you know, whether we are in leadership or we are in a team never walk without a, a focus or without a vision i never do that because we will lose our way right so uh, a leader without a vision is blind right it's, it's like that's why the lord jesus says to the to the you know pharisees and the sadducees hey, it's the blind leading the blind they are leaders they are there in the temple people are going to them Offering sacrifices, doing all that, but they don't know what they do. They don't have a vision. They don't know what what is ahead. They have no clue what they're doing. That's why, if we don't see it, we cannot lead people into it. Right. So, for example, you have a church of fifty people. You drive your church. You tell them, "Hey, we are going to pray. We are going to seek God, and one day, you know, in this year, we're going to keep this." You know, you 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 talk to your church folks. You tell them. So we're 50 by the end of this year, 2023, let's reach 100 people. And uh, in this 100 people, we need to have at least 50 leaders. Let's start new life groups. And uh, we should have at least five new life groups. We should have a Bible study. If we do not tell them what will happen is it's just going to be, they're, you know, they're coming Sunday, going back home, coming on Sunday, going back home. Right. So right now, uh, uh, in one of our locations, the locations that uh, uh, we are in, uh, it is the east of Bangalore, and we have a, approximately about 120. If all of them come together, we have about 150 odd adults. Uh, but I tell the volunteers, put 150 chairs. All 150 chairs should be full by the end of this year. Right now, it's it's something that I tell the you know we we tell we sit together as Leader, and we matter. We, we uh, how do we do that? We have the big vision. How do we be the salt of that? And so, uh, as leaders, you need to tell your people, you need to communicate your vision to them, right? And even as you do that, maintain proper heart attitudes. It is Matthew twenty twenty five through twenty eight. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant, and whoever wants to be first among you 
must be a slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. I look at this, it's self-explanatory. Jesus is saying, you look at the world, they they are, you know, you, you they get leadership, they become rulers, and it gets into their head. Basically, they, you know, there's an attitude. There's an attitude problem. It goes, power goes into their heads. But it's not going to be so for you and me, because in God's kingdom, it's the opposite. If you want to be great, become a servant. And once you become a servant, great will be your work in the kingdom of God. Uh, and that's what Jesus did. He was a great preacher, great ruler of people. The Romans were willing to, you know, the Roman centurion were, you know, came and uh, pleaded with Jesus. And people knew who he was. He was powerful. Nobody is going to follow one person. 5,000, 10,000 people following one person. They're not going to do it unless they've seen something in him. There was this leadership quality. Now, nowhere does Jesus throw his weight around. But, uh, but many of places he, he's humbled. He's, he says, you know, great is your faith. He looks at the woman and, uh, with the issue of bleeding and he says, uh, your faith has healed you. I haven't done anything. Jesus could have said, oh, this is the kind of faith you must have. But see, he, she touched the hem of my garment. You see the power that I have. But he says, your faith has healed you. I was just walking, minding my own business. I was going to do, go somewhere else. But you see the heart there, a heart of servanthood, a heart of passion, but a heart of self-control. And this is the heart that you and I must have. Yes, God will raise us up. God will give us positions of leadership. But um, in God's eyes, we are also to be to walk in humility, to walk in servanthood. Right? And it's wonderful, you know, especially in the corporate sector when you see these, uh, you know, these these men and women who are high up in the ranks. They're high up in leadership. Um, you know, they are heads of companies, but they walk in humility. They walk in humility. They walk in, and that is power in that. Right? Then there's power in that. So these are the three main hard, hard attitudes that we must uh, desire, that we must reveal, even as we are leaders. Now, during the course of time, leadership, there's many things involved, right? There's correction, there is uh, setting things right, there is uh, bringing, giving feedback. All of that is there, appreciation, uh, changing things. All those things will be there, right? Uh, 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 but in while we're doing all that, our heart must be hey, uh, uh, a servant heart. Now, you know, there will be times as leaders, you may need to ask people to step down. Right? But even as we do that, our heart attitude should, must be right, right. It's not like somebody's not performing. You say, okay, because uh, you know I have, I'm a servant heart. I can let them to keep. It's not about that, right? Uh, servanthood, passion. Self control, three main hard attitudes. So let's look at each of them. First one is servanthood. The leader's heart is that of a servant, right? He serves people, right? It's, it's the opposite, right? He serves people, he serves the organization. Uh, uh, there's the servanthood is an expression through humility, meekness, and sacrifice. And the Lord Jesus is our perfect example of servanthood. Right, uh, all through the Bible, we see, uh, uh, we we see, especially in Jesus's ministry, he talks about this every now and then. Remember the sons of thunder? He says, uh, he says to them, they say, hey, uh, Lord, you you tell us, and we'll call down fire to this place. What does Jesus say? He says, No, don't do that. They need forgiveness as much as you and I need. Uh, so, uh, servanthood. Is, is something that we all, right? Uh, we all. Now, the servanthood is very easy to have when we are small. We just start off ministry, we are, you know, or we are starting off an organization, we are not known, nobody knows us, we are small, uh, no, there's no appreciation, there's not much of an impact. But as we grow, whether corporate sector, whether in in the ministry, uh, when we grow, 
people will recognize, people will want to join you. Uh, that is when we need to maintain our hard attitudes, this attitude of servanthood. Right? Second one is passion. Right? Uh, being passionate as leaders, we must be passionate. Like, uh, uh, now, passion is something, you know, passion for the vision that is ahead of us. And passion is something that keeps us going. Right? Yesterday, I was just watching a, a, a clipping of, of this, this man who was building a rocket. Uh, uh, it was a small rocket. Uh, but he had, you know, uh, he was trying to uh, put the electric work. It was a homemade rocket. Right? So he was trying to make that rocket. And every time he tried it, he, he, it failed. It either bursted, it blew up, it just got burned, or it didn't fly. Something was happening. But he kept trying it. And he kept trying it, trying and trying and trying. And about the 40 or 45th attempt, there was some kind of hope, right? So that rocket just flew up. Then he decided, okay, I'll use the same method and build a bigger rocket. Right? I'll use real, you know, uh, uh, iron and uh, I'll use the real material that is required for the rocket. And so he he did that. And eventually, you know, this man went on to build a real rocket. What started off small, like he, he started off with these, you know, cardboard fitting the machine inside of it and you know, trying to make it work. Uh, but he shares his whole experience. He says, oh, the interviewer was asking, weren't you tired of, you know, it's not easy, you know, you go out to the field, you try to get the rocket to work, it bursts. What was your attitude when you came back home with that burnt pieces of the rocket? He says, I knew that one day, I will build my own rocket, so I had to do this. Passion is something that drives us. Failure will never stop it. Problems will never, you know, uh, suppress that passion. Right? Passion is something that drives us. And so a leader's passion and enthusiasm is contagious. Right? Uh, there's, there's, this passion is demonstrated through hard work, the ability to stay the course, the ability to uh, just go through those turbulent times, the ability to uh, enjoy, to be cheerful, to uh, stand with each other, uh, you know. And even when you look at, uh, you know, people who are great men and women of God, they were passionate, passionate about God. Uh, and you look at the Welsh revival. We talked about revivals. Oh, you look at the Welsh revival, you look at the um, Moravian revival, they were passionate. They had one vision, one goal. What? Pour out your spirit, God, let there be a move. Right? Uh, 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 and, and it's just so powerful to have a vision. Uh, this passion is something that needs to be kept burning in our, each one of us. Romans 12 11 says, Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of masters, cheerful, expectant. Verse 12, don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Right? Uh, so I want to encourage each one of us, be passionate. If your passion is not in it, you know, sometimes you know, God makes us do things that we, we feel we may not be passionate about. But over time, we become passionate over it. Or sometimes we're doing something and we know that this is uh, not really what you want to do. Prayerfully think about what you want to do next. right? Uh, sometimes God may completely turn the course of events. But, uh, but again, we need to be wise on uh, how to make changes in our life. But basically, the point is, whatever we're doing, be passionate about it. As pastors, as leaders, you we need to drive our people. We need to be passionate. Right? We need to be passionate. And uh, that's when we are passionate, it's contagious. People will catch it. Right? People will catch it. Uh, and, and so that is something that we must always keep in mind. Next one is self control. Uh, again, 
very important. Self-control is the ability to be self-governing, demonstrated through self-discipline and self-restraint. Right? Many a times, uh, through seasons, especially difficult times, times when we have a lot of work, we may feel, get upset, we may get angry, we may uh, burst out, you know. And these are natural things. Right? Uh, it's natural. But God is calling us as leaders to have self-control, uh, to, uh, 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 to be self-governing, to be uh, to keep a check on himself, his time, his work, his habits, his productivity, interactions with people, his resources, everything. Uh, Self-governing. Because the reason is nobody's going to come and ask a leader, did you pray? Did you spend time reading the word? Did you minister to people? Did you have your, uh, you know, uh, what are your habits? I hope you're not watching too much of television. I hope you're not watching, you know, using the phone too. Nobody's going to come and ask a leader because he's the leader, right? So you and I, must, as leaders, must be self-governing. We must know, right, what we must do, right? Uh, uh, you know, if there are things that are uh, taking you away, taking your time away from, from what you have to do, just keep it away. Just... You know, no, many people ask me why you don't have Instagram and Facebook. And, uh, I, I don't. I, I'm not against it, right? But uh, I just don't want it. I, I don't want to waste my time. Uh, I just feel that we can do something better uh, and being an author. But it's good. It's good. You know, you can use it, uh, especially now. You know, media is very important. You need. I right? said, so don't say, okay, you know, uh, no need of Instagram. We need all that. Right. We need to, uh, right? As a church, we have Instagram. Right? We, we promote all our programs, events. But personally, I don't have it. I I choose not. Uh, personally, apps that uh, I pay, you know, I sparingly use WhatsApp, uh, and I uh, so that we can just communicate, make things easier. But I very sparingly try and use it. Why? Because it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I want to be. I keep a check on myself. Right? Nobody's going to come and ask for what did you do the whole day. Right? But we need to be self-governed. Right? Oh. Next one: maintain proper people skills. Forbes twenty twenty eight: Love and truth form a good leader. Sound leadership is founded. On loving integrity. The mark, Proverbs 14 20, the mark of a good leader is loyal followers. Leadership is nothing without a following. Now, remember, ministry, we talked about this, right? Ministry, uh, business, organization, it's all about people. Leadership is about people. If there are no people, who, you gonna, who are we going to lead? Nobody, right? So, leadership involves vision, goals, Planning, direction, responsibility, decision making, governance, correction, um, and resolving disputes. So much, right? But as leaders, as leaders, since we need to do all these things, we need to maintain good people relationships. Be a people person. We cannot have a leader who is, you know. Just somebody who will come, say something, and walk away. He or she, as a leader, must be able or must have this ability to develop people relationships. People skills is what we call it. Right? People skills. You talk to people. Right? Uh, so, for example, you have new people coming into your church, the first time visitors at church. Well, you, as a pastor or as a leader, you must be able to talk to them. If you can't say, hey, I'm an introvert, uh, can you choose somebody else, go and talk to right? them? Most often, people who come to church, they want to meet with the pastor or the life group leaders. They must be willing to talk. right? They must be willing to uh, engage with them. You can't say, hey, thank you for coming to church. Hope to see you next week. That's not going to help. Right? We've got to get to know them. You know, hey, what do you do? 
where are you from you know, how have you been oh, oh, what is your work and you just begin to get to know them what is that that's people skills right now when you already have a team you're, you're, you're in leadership uh, you know last week we met as leaders and you know we were discussing some points at this point came up you know as leaders we are so often looking at the tasks okay task one two three four needs to be done right but we forget the fact that we are dealing with people as leaders we are dealing with people so as people they are going through different seasons of life they may be going through a physical challenge a mental challenge or financial problems or they're just tired and weary or you know they're they're worried about their children or some of them are you know are looking for a spouse looking for a, a marriage proposal or some of them are praying for children there's so much people within the team so i remember we just met and we said okay even as we are you know work oriented we want to do these tasks that's good let's remember to be leaders who will also minister to one another working people right uh, to remember that hey they are also people and they're going through problems uh, because uh, one of the things that i've noticed is as leaders sometimes what happens is we have these tasks always in our mind right and and that's a natural thing right uh, so you know the first thing that happens to me on monday morning or even sunday night is okay the new week is going to start monday morning first hour then uh, after that we have the uh, life group leaders uh, meeting then we have the member care meeting then uh, we have the church uh, leadership meeting then we have things to do in the office and tuesday to us bible college wednesday uh, bible college thursday to us bible college these are the things that i need to do so it's all there but many a times we meet with people and we forget to ask how are you so it's all about the tasks, about the things to get done, right? So as leaders, we must develop these skills, right? Working with people takes sensitivity. Be sensitive to their feelings, uh, the challenges. Listen to, to their perspective. Respect people regardless of what their role is, what their position is, uh, whether they are, uh, what language they speak, what culture they are from, regardless of all that. If they are on your team, if they are part of your ministry or your organization, we have to respect them and honor them. Right? Uh, uh, leaders are encouragers. Leaders are positive. They always inspire people. Right? They know how to speak the right words, uh, speak the right thing to the right people, and how to get them, uh, you know, uh, being built up. Leaders build people. They empower people. They influence them. Uh, giving them opportunities to decide, giving them opportunities to grow and develop themselves. Uh, good leaders don't show partiality, right? Uh, leaders correct people lovingly, uh, and and they good leaders want to see others grow. The moment a leader sees somebody else and says, "Oh, this person." can you know is everyone like him everyone want to you know appreciating him and the moment a leader tries to suppress that person that person has failed as a leader he has failed as a leader because the responsibility of a leader is to make sure that he brings out the best of those in his team now why what happened between Saul and David? Everyone respected Saul as the king. Everyone was running away when they saw Goliath. It was only David. Right? But Saul said they all started singing the song. Uh, Saul killed thousands, David kills tens of thousands. Right? David killed only one person. That was equal to tens and thousands. Saul was angry. Saul was upset. He wanted to kill him. He lost his vision, the, uh, the 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 vision of what God had called him for, and God had already discussed, and God had already revealed that you know he's going to be taken off the throne. There's going to be a new leader. What he what could have Saul done differently? He could have said, "Okay, David, 
these are the things I learned. Now, uh, David was just an army, sorry, just a shepherd. He had no clue about armies. He had no clue about guerrilla warfare. Maybe what Saul could have done was, okay, David, how old are you? Uh, I'm about uh, 15 years old. Okay, you do one thing. Every week, three days in a week, you come to the palace. I have some people here in the army. They will train you on how to use these swords and how to you know, do warfare. They'll train you how to survive in the deserts. And by the time you're... Uh, you know, you're 30, 35 years old. Uh, when I pass on, I'll gladly give you the leadership and you can be the next king of Israel. And when you're the king, uh, you know, you can do better. Did that happen? No. But could he have done it? Yes. He would have been a very effective leader. I mean, looked at uh, Nehemiah, right? He saw that uh, how he led the people. That was beautiful. He brought out the best of everyone. Right? So, as leaders, uh, this is something that we must have proper people skills, right? Next one. Uh, even as I go on, feel free to ask your questions, right? You can post it on the chat. You can also unmute and ask questions, right? But I'm just going to keep going uh, with the flow, right? If the head is not right, the body won't be right. Proverbs 29:12. When a leader listens to malicious gossip, all the workers get infected with evil now uh, now the, here in this verse it says only gossip but when the head is not right meaning when the leadership is there's a problem in leadership it will affect those in the team under them why because it is like you know it is just the head and the body and now Picture this. You have if you get a terrible headache, like what's happening? You just want to sleep, you just want to rest in the bed the whole day, the head is aching. Uh, nobody says, hey, only your head is aching. No, your hands, your legs, your body, everything is fine. Why do you want to keep sleeping? No, it's gonna affect the whole body. Is it did, did you fracture your hands? Do you get any muscle aches? Nothing. Your body is complete from neck down, you're completely fine. But the head is aching. It affects the whole body. We want to sleep. We want to rest. Right? That's how it is. Right? For example, you get a cold or a cough. Right? What happens? You got cold. You know, uh, there's a running nose. You get sinus. And only this portion is paining. Right? There's just pain. and But the whole body is like, oh, man, I can't. I can't stand. I feel tired. That's how it is. If the head is not right, the body is also not going to be right. right. Or look at the other way. When when we you know get hurt in our body, right, uh, and there's a physical pain in the body, uh, or we have you know gone through some pains. Sometimes it affects the mind. The head is affected. Oh, I can't do this. So I need to sit. I need to sleep. I need to rest. Right. So both ways it's interchangeable. As leaders. If we want the body to be in good shape, the head should be right, right? Uh, if the leader is not right, if his motivations, his decisions and actions are not right, the rest of the body will be affected. And if you look at ministry, there are many, many organizations which uh, or churches and ministries which the leader was not right. Well, they were either involved in fraudulence, they were involved in sexual immorality or prostitutes, or uh, that they were involved in uh, money laundering, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, and when they're involved in all of these things, what's happening? Now you have a group of maybe a thousand people in the church, they are sitting every Sunday, Oh, this, this is what pastor is going to say. This is what he wants us. He wants this team, that team. You've given the vision. You're driving the vision. Then the head is not right. Suddenly they hear, you know, uh, this is what happened. The pastor was involved in uh, some money laundering case and he's going to go to the court. What's going to happen? The whole body is going to be like, oh, under what he did. Otherwise, that vision, that drive, everything is going to be sucked away. 
uh, and I think we spoke about the Mars Hill Church, right? Uh, and it's only not only Mars Hill. Mars Hill was a you know significant drop from 30, 40,000 people to just a few hundreds. But there are other ministries as well, other organizations as well. We look at in the corporate sector, many many organizations have fallen just for you know uh, fraudulent work. You know, in the corporate sector, they don't care if the bosses are living in sexual morality or uh, they're living a fornicated life. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but there are other things that I do. So basically, the leader must be strong, must have a sense of protecting ourselves, keeping ourselves to make sure that we are staying right as leaders. We need the right kind of people. Uh, to speak into our lives and to keep us on track, right? Very important. Stay away from evil. Now, especially where, as you grow up in leadership, um, be wise. I, I, I think one of the things that we need as a church is wisdom. Yes, power, God's holiness, all of that is, is there. We need all of that. That wisdom is you know, Saul writes from his uh, uh, from his wisdom. Right. Sorry, Solomon. He writes from the wisdom. And he says, listen, I've enjoyed everything. All you need is wisdom to handle everything. You've got a lot of money, you need wisdom. You've got a lot of uh, uh, leadership roles, you need wisdom. You've got a family, you need wisdom. You have children, you need wisdom. You have a ministry, you need wisdom. Right. So everything. Uh, just as leaders, we must ask God. To direct us, we must ask God to say, God, help me, help me to uh, that my head as a head, I should be right. Only then I can speak into people's lives. Right? So now I'm not saying that we won't make mistakes. When we make mistakes, we can always go back and uh, you know correct them, bring correction to our lives, be humble enough to say, hey, this is something that maybe I shouldn't have said. Uh, and, uh, and even now, sometimes I do. You know, sometimes when I'm preaching, I may say something, and then I realize after some time, or you know, uh, uh, people come and share, and they say, "Hey, listen," I say, "Oh yes, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. That's not what I meant by the example, but it didn't come across that way." So I can always, you know, uh, I can always go back, and say, "Hey, this is what I meant. I apologize if it came out the wrong way." Uh, just being humble. Right? Nothing wrong in apologizing. Because you're keeping the team, the ministry, uh, with this priority. That's the priority. Next one: demonstrate, emphasize, empower, and celebrate honesty. Proverbs sixteen twelve to thirteen: Good leaders abhor wrongdoing of all kinds. Sound leadership has a moral foundation. Good leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them the truth. Right. In a world that we are living in today, honesty is sometimes risky. Right? Can't be honest. If you're honest, then we can't go up the ladder. Or uh, if we're honest, we may be suppressed. People may ridicule and mock us. Others may strike back to those who are honest. Leaders must protect people who are honest by putting themselves at risk right, from people who are dishonest. It's basically you're going into the battlefield, and it's like the leader comes and he stands in front of them, saying, "If you're shooting arrows, let it first go through me, because these are the people that I back up, and they are honest people, right? Empower honesty. Empower people to be honest by celebrating their honesty, right? Empower people uh, to be honest in your organization." Um, Never let honest people feel vulnerable or even punished by the choice of their honesty. Uh, uh, you know, it does happen, in, especially in corporate, uh, even in ministry. Sometimes people are honest, but the leaders don't see through it, and you know, it may just come out as uh, you know a, a, a rod, say of correction. You know, you did this, you did this. But as a leader, some people will. No, hate you for your honesty, but there will be some who will stand by you. Stay honest, no matter what. 
I want to give this example, right? And uh, I never thought of it, but I just thought of this. It really, uh, even to think about, think of it. It was just, uh, uh, you know, it, it brought, it brings tears to my eyes because it was really uh, a very, very powerful uh, event that happened. So when I was in uh, Bangalore, uh, there was this couple who had uh, come to church and they were an elderly couple and over time what happened was they were always you know there was always some problem they were always not not happy either. so uh, I did my best to minister to them to reach out to them and eventually what happened was they uh, you know I was young at that time probably 20 no, not 20. I was 30, 30, 30 old, right? Uh, and so they felt that he, you know, I was too young and I was not a good pastor, I was not a good leader, and uh, I was being dishonest. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know where, but they had, they have felt that you know, I was being dishonest and all that. Yeah. Uh, and they wrote an email to senior pastor and they said, you know, he's dishonest, this is what he did. And all kinds of false accusations, false, everything was so false, right? And, uh, and after that, uh, you know, uh, I, I, was, I, started, I was talking to Pastor, and Pastor mentioned, uh, you know, I got a mail from this couple. I said, what was it about? And so he sent me that email. And when I read it, my heart sank. Because I thought I did so much. I mean, I, I did my best. We did our best. And all false accusations, right? And, uh, just belittling and saying things that are, you know, that didn't make sense at all. After this, this after reading that email, I didn't say anything. But I remember, uh, you know, Pastor just he just called me, and he said, "Ask them to find another church." lovingly correct them, ask them to move out, ask them to request them to exit out of the WhatsApp groups and request them to move to another church if they feel that, you know, you're not a good leader. But I know that you are a good leader. And that was like, you know, it, it as a leader to hear that it was, I think, the greatest sense of satisfaction that you can he never asked me what happened. Never asked me. Never said, you know, did this happen? Did that? Never. What he said was, in the email, he replied back saying, I know Paul for more than 10 years, and I know that they're good leaders. I know what they are. They studied with us. So, I, you know, it was, I, I'll never forget that. It was a sign, you know, when people are against you, when you are honest, your leaders will stand for you. They will stand, right? And it's a powerful thing to do. Stay honest when things go right, when things go wrong, stay honest, right? And you know, God is fighting for us. Always remember that. Your attitude wrecks or invigorates. People tolerate or celebrate your attitude, right? Uh, people tolerate or celebrate your attitude. Okay, we have quite a lot more, but we have to do it next class. But let's see, uh, Proverbs 16, 14, and 15. An intemperate leader wrecks havoc in lives. You're smart to stay clear of someone like that. Good-tempered leaders invigorate lives. They're like spring rain and sunshine. Attitude is quickly noticeable. <laughs> right? uh, your attitude affects whether others, you know, whether people like it or not. Your attitude either refreshes or inspires or it dampens and kills people, people's spirit, right? Uh, when we are people who are always ridiculing, mocking, you'll find that your team will, will, and they see you, they'll run the other way. They don't want to speak to you. Why? That's something wrong. It's the attitude. It's quickly noticeable, right? People tend to avoid you the best they can and simply tolerate bad attitudes. Uh, sometimes they don't have a choice. Uh, 
right? they have to just follow they just have to work uh, but when you have a good attitude you draw people to you people will come to you people will share their thoughts we'll be open to share whatever it is right? I was uh, you know for the third years we were talking about uh, discipleship right and you know that there's a point which has really touched me you know over uh, in discipleship firstly not always people will come and share all their thoughts and their, their problems with you but the more we are open the more we have right hard attitudes uh, they will begin to you know, express they will begin to share over time right so always stay positive always have a great attitude right? uh, you know yeah, even when things are not going, when things are going right, it's good to have a good attitude. But when uh, things are not going right, uh, uh, align yourself to God's will and say, okay, God, there's a reason why this is happening. There's a reason why, you know, these challenges are coming through. But as a team, as a leader, uh, I will stay in right attitude so that I can, uh, you know, continue to empower my team, and continue to empower the ministry and the vision that you have given us, right? Uh, be real, be down to earth, avoid pretense. Proverbs 13 7 A pretentious, showy life is an empty life. A plain and simple life is full of life. Right? Uh, leadership is not show business. Uh, remember that a leader is just a normal human being, not a superhuman from another planet. Uh, so it's very good to be real, it's very good to be down to earth, avoid pretentious. Don't put yourself on a pedestal, uh, be accessible, be approachable, uh, laugh, cry, be normal, right? Uh, you know, just don't have to show that, oh, I, no, nobody can come near me. If they come near me, my anointing will become lesser. All of that uh, doesn't matter. Just be normal, just be down to earth. Laugh with people. Don't have to be, oh, I'm a leader, I should be strict. Right? So always be strict and have a strict face that nobody should come near me. No, just, just be there, laugh with people, those who are mourning, mourn with them. Uh, be there, just be normal, right? Uh, uh, people will know that, you know, you, they can come to you. Uh, uh, you know, especially when we go to the north of India, no? it's a very different culture because leaders and pastors are uh, given so much of, you know, uh, priority or I don't know how it is now I hope things are changing but is it for them oh no everything or pastor or prophet or whatever uh, so we used to go to North India for our missions and uh, all our conferences and all of that and we used to do our own things right we used to take food we used to eat what they eat we used to stay in those small rooms we used to wash our own plates uh, wash our own clothes when we we're staying there for our for weeks we used to do it ourselves oh, for them it was too much oh how is it that they are doing this themselves? You can't do it. I said, no, you can do it. It's the same thing. Uh, we are also people. You are also people. You are having food. We'll have the same food. No special food from the hotel. Same thing. Uh, just being normal. Uh, same. Now, some of them don't know how to play instruments. Some of them know how to play instruments. Just being there, hey, this is something that you can do. You can learn this song. This is... Uh, in all these things, right, even as we are being normal, being down to earth, uh, hold to high standards, right, yet be a normal person. I hope you're getting what I'm saying, right? Hold to high standards, yet be a normal person. So, for example, you, you know you're going to teach, right? Let your teaching be the best of your ability. Or you're going to have a team meeting. And be the best, high standards, give your best. If it's worship, or even if it's in the corporate sector, if it's some something that you're doing, you're doing a, a assignment or, a, or an event that, that has been assigned to you, hold to high standards, yet be normal as it is. And when success comes, just be normal. Right? We don't have to be, uh, we don't have to show that we are okay, we are above all of you or all of that. But just, uh, but here's another very important point. Be careful of familiarity in the wrong sense. 
uh, people no longer take you seriously your words won't matter very important right so we be normal we do what they you know what just being humble being normal we laugh we cry we, we're there with everyone go out just being there but even as you do that make sure that you hold to high standards and that familiarity as leaders should not affect what people say right uh, and your words must still be powerful it, it should still impact the people in your team and that's a that's a balance that we must find it's a balance we must find okay oh uh, this is what it says oh uh, i need to be friendly i need to be with him but there is also this aspect of I, I, I am also a leader, so I need to know. Right. So there are there will be times you may have a. I remember this. Oh, this happened quite a few years back. The youth, uh, you know, they said, "Hey, yeah, let's all go for a you know, outing for a movie." So, you know, we'll go, they said we'll go here. We'll have some fun together. We'll fellowship together. Then we we'll go for the movie. So I said to them. So you can do what you want. I'll come with you. We can eat something, but I don't come for the movie because I'm not interested in it. I was there with them. Right? And we had a good time. We had a good meal. We had a good lunch. Good fellowship. But I held my friend. I said, "No, I'm not coming for the movie." So he said, "No, pastor, you come. No, it's okay. Nothing. It's not a, you know." I said, "No. There are certain standards that I have. Not that I don't want to be with you all." But this is something that I will not do. So then, they realized, okay, you will not come. Words are still powerful. As a leader, they know this is so. From the next time, they know they'll not call me for it. So this is something that uh, it's not like I found out everything. But these are some things that we learn, right? We inculcate. Know that we are approachable, humble. But they know that we are also leaders, and uh, our words are important, and we are called to speak into their lives. Right? Uh, all right. So let's stop. Sorry, it took a couple of minutes extra, but uh, let's stop. Uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Anyone's been very quiet. I hope uh, uh, taking in everything that we are learning together. All right. Let's close in prayer quickly. Let's close. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and your grace, your anointing upon each of us, Lord, even as we have studied today on leadership. Pray, God, that you will empower us to be great leaders, effective leaders. And we pray, God, for wisdom, for passion, for servanthood, for self-control. Uh, Lord, that we will walk in these attributes, Lord, continue to Lord, just glorify your name and build your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I pray for the students that you bless each one of them and help them, Lord, no matter which phase of life they are in, Lord, that they will continue to draw from you, continue to, Lord, just pursue you in their lives. Lord, we thank you. Give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you all.